What's up guys? Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to use we're going to learn how to use the open street map integration in order to come in here and create a city inside of your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the powerful things about twin motion is it has open street map integration built in that allows you to quickly create full cities inside of your renderings. And so let's go ahead and take a look at how you can do that. So to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete out this ground that's generally in here when you first open up a twin motion, um, when you first open up a twin motion file, because um, we don't really need that in there anymore. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down into the urban settings inside of twin motion. So go down here, click on the button for urban, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring that in. And so the way that we're going to bring that in is by clicking on the button for context. And we've talked about the context a little bit before. This is where your backgrounds can be found and where you can adjust those. And then there's also the option over here for context. Text. And so what the context is going to allow you to do is that's going to allow you to actually search for a location and bring it into your renderings. And so you can either zoom out and find wherever you're trying to go manually. Um, you can definitely do that if you want, or you can click on the little magnifying glass right here and type in the location that you're looking for. So in this particular location, I'm going to look for Denver, Colorado. So I'm going to type in Denver, Colorado, and I'm going to pick from the list, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this. That's going to allow me to bring Denver into this model. And I will note, you can't bring the whole city in at one time. I mean, I guess you could try it, but I don't think it works very well. What I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to find just the area that I'm looking for. So for me, I'm going to bring in this area right here, this kind of triangle area. And so to do that, we're going to click on the button for the grab tool. And one thing that's kind of weird about the grab tool, and I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what, but uh, you can't really change the shape of the area that you're grabbing, at least on my PC. This may be just something that has to do with uh, my installation or something that just hasn't been fixed in a version or something like that. So the way that you would uh, situate this instead is you would zoom in or out in order to fit this location. And do note that the bigger this is, the longer this is going to take to download um, and generate your buildings, especially on a slower internet connection. So I'm just going to pick this area right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the button for grab. So when you click on the button for grab, what that's going to do is that's going to download that map data from OpenStreetMap, and it's going to generate a city based on that data. So that's going to bring in buildings. Um, it's going to generate roads. I believe it's going to generate some trees and things like that as well. So we're going to let this work for a minute, and then we'll come back and take a look at what it did. And so you can see how this is going to tell you that it's generating buildings and roads. And so when I first fly around in this model, you're going to notice that my camera feels kind of slow. And so the reason your camera feels kind of slow is because this is a very large model. Your camera's not actually slow, it's just that you're covering super large distances. So you can see how it takes a little while for me to fly around. So the first thing you may want to change if you're flying around in the city model is you may want to change your camera speed. What you can do by coming up here and clicking on this I and then clicking on the speed button and selecting the car instead of the bicycle. And so if you do that, you can see how you can fly around the city a lot faster than you could before. And um, so you'll notice if you fly around that what this has done is this has come in here and it's generated a whole bunch of different buildings based on that map data. And it's also in addition to that, added in some other things like roads, and it's got some trees in here as well. And the interesting thing about this, at least for me, is that these roads and trees and everything like that, these all get brought in as individual items, so you can actually edit and adjust them separately. So you can see how I can select this little segment and move it up and down and do things like that. And so let's go pick a view that's going to show us a little bit more. You'll notice in areas like this one, you also pick up things that are designated as like green areas as well. So in this case, this is picking up like the Capitol building and the square around the Capitol building. Um, but and you'll notice you're getting a little bit of Z fighting in here, which means that you've got two planes occupying the same space. That's a little bit odd to me, but um, we'll talk about one quick way to fix that, at least in your rendered images. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated in your videos. All right, and so you can come back in here and add in more context using this uh, 
this location function again if you wanted to. However, that gets a little bit weird because it just brings it in as a new item in your uh, outliner over here. So if you do that, it just drops it at the same point. It doesn't position it or check to see if anything's overlapped or anything like that. So my recommendation would be to try to pick up everything that you need in your first go round when you do something like this. So if you decide you want to change the color of one building, probably what you could do is you could use the eyedropper and then you could come in here and you could add a new material. So let's say we wanted like a blue material or something like that. And uh, you don't want to just click in here and add that. And so if you wanted to replace the material on all the buildings, you would just make sure that the replace material function was selected and that would replace that material that's being applied to all of those buildings. Or you could turn on apply to object mode and you could just apply it to one building by clicking and dragging it in here like this. And you can see how it's acting a little bit weird, but you can definitely use that to do this. It may just take a little bit of extra moving around in order to really get the look that you're going for. So that's kind of the buildings. Now let's take a look at the roads that this brings in. So this brings in the roads and an interesting thing about the roads is it actually brings those roads in as individual objects. So you can see how I can click on one of these roads and move it up and down, which is probably a good thing because it just kind of like stacks them all on top of each other. So being able to edit that is probably a good idea. Um, but those roads are in here as individual items. And so one thing you could do is you could replace the asphalt material on all the roads just by going in here and using replace material. So if you decide that you wanted to use like a man-made ground material, maybe like a concrete road or something like that, you could drag that in so that all of these roads get replaced with that material if you want. Or you could also come in here and you could use apply to object mode and just apply that to individual little roads just like this. And so one thing you might notice about this that gets a little bit odd is when you do that, you start running into what's known as Z fighting, which means that uh, which means that you have two different materials in one location and uh, the graphics engine is trying to figure out which one to display. So this kind of flashes. And so what that means is you start running into this weird effect inside of your renderings. So you're gonna run into this at two different levels. You're gonna run into it at the level where your roads are overlapping, so you're also going to run into this from an overall level. So if you see how if I zoom out, you're getting a Z fighting really bad off in the distance because this is trying to figure out if it wants to display this giant ground plane or if it wants to display this grass and these roads. And so that doesn't look very good. And the best way I've found in order to fix that is to just select your ground plane and just use the up and down and move it down by something like negative 0.2 or something like that. You can see if I move this down to negative 0.2, all of a sudden I'm not getting that Z fighting anymore because they're not, um, they're not operating in the same 3D space. So you can use this in order, to, uh, in order to fix that Z fighting and all you've really done is you've just moved your ground plane down so it's actually slightly below the road geometry itself. And you do have to be a little bit careful. Um, you may wanna consider like putting a curb along that or figuring something out to kind of cover that or just use your camera angle in order to hide it. But that's the easiest way I've found to fix the Z fighting inside of this model. If anybody else has a better way, let me know. But the other way you're gonna to have to deal with that is you're gonna to have to deal with that on an individual roads overlapping level. But for like individual roads like this one, so if you're gonna have like this little strip right here, I would probably actually just delete. So if I click on this, I'd probably just delete that. But you can see how you're still getting that right in here. So probably what I would do is I would take this little stretch of road here and just move it up by something like 0.1. So just enough that they're not occupying the same space anymore. Now you're not getting the Z fighting that you were getting before. And so applications like this one are a good place, and I'm gonna make a full video about this function, but applications like this one are a good place where you can use the uh, copy objects function. So let's say you were coming in here with your library and you were trying to add city furniture material. And let's say you wanted to add some benches in here. So let's say you wanted to add a few of these Teeg, Feeg benches. You could add one in here like this. And we'll go ahead and flip it. So we'll just type in 180 degrees. Well now, if you remember, if you have an object selected, you can hold the shift key 
and click and drag along an axis to create a copy. And so then it'll ask how many copies you want to create. And so you could create two or three copies and adjust the spacing in here as well. So if I hit OK, what that did is that created multiple different copies of this bench in here. And so this is really good for urban applications because everything kind of has a fixed spacing. So if you're trying to like randomly place things or something like that, that can get a little bit weirder. Um, there are tools for that, but for something like this, being able to copy things in a straight line is really helpful. And then the last thing I want to talk about, and we may get a little further in depth into city building a little ways down the road, but I want to talk just for a second about some of the decals that you can add in here. So I'm going to do a search for decal and click on that right here. And we probably want to go back up into our library before we do that. But you can see how there's decals contained inside of Twin Motion that you can use in order to add things like striping and other things like that. So you can see how this decal, you can adjust the sizing on it. Just like this. And then you could use the copy function and create a bunch of copies. And so you could actually use these decals to create things like road striping and other things like that. So you could also come in here and add like puddles or other things. These decals basically sit on top of objects. So you could bring in like a right turn arrow and drop that right here. So you can use those decals to make your roads look a lot more realistic. Whoops. which is a great function for being able to add these different things in here without actually having to adjust the geometry of the road itself. So coupling the decals and the object placement options and um, the road materials in here can allow you to really quickly create roads and cities and things like that. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you have any tips for city modeling inside of Twin Motion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.